Welcome on in, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rose City. A bit of a late start here for us. We do apologize for the technical difficulties that we experienced here. Set the game situation for you. Your TU Nighthawks are up 14 to nothing on a Kiana Cole touchdown catch and an Akara Brown touchdown catch for the Point Skyhawks coming in out of West Point, Georgia slash Valley, Alabama, right there on the state line. It's been nothing but interceptions as they as Maddie Motts has just thrown her third of the game. Setting the score here. It's been a uh, it's been a rough day so far for the Skyhawks. Uh, offensively, just not been able to get out of their own uh, first quadrant there. Alexa Wilson on the other side, though, has been quite efficient as she throws that incomplete pass. One of the first ones she's thrown all day. And we are actually coming down to the last minute of the first quarter here as the Nighthawks look to punctuate an outstanding first quarter with yet another score. Wilson takes the snap, rolls to her right. She's looking. She's looking. Fires. Caught ball by uh, Wood, and she trots in for the touchdown. Aaliyah Wood, with 27.8 seconds left in this opening quarter, makes it a 20 to nothing lead for your TU Nighthawks. Just a beautiful job thus far. TU going on all cylinders here. Just continuing their work from yesterday where they were going every way to Sunday in a 46 to nothing route of Reinhardt. Everything going right for the Nighthawks a day ago. Look to be extending that great play today. 20 to nothing. Here's the PAT. Three receivers to stop your screen. One to the bottom is Nakara Brown. Takes the snap to Wilson. Looking left. Fires just through the hands of number 24 there. The transfer from Warner, Amiri Logan. And that's going to be the first PAT that has not been successful for the Nighthawks. And, well, let's see if the defense can shut down point again. Point a one-win team here on the season. The only win they've uh, been able to notch this season was a win against Reinhardt in the Reinhardt Invitational just a couple weeks ago. Otherwise, they have had a very tough road to hoe. Obviously, in the Sun Conference, most every game is a tough road to hoe. They're led by quarterback Matty Motes here as they go into a bunch formation. Motes takes the snap, rolls to her right, looking, looking, tries to get it, goes back to the right, and that's going to be a first down there pulled by number nine, Janae Scott. That's going to be a first down, though, for the Skyhawks, their second first down of the day. They did get a first down on their first drive, uh, but turned the ball over later down the field. That's going to be the end of one here. After one quarter of play, it's been all Thomas, a 20 to nothing lead. We're going to step aside for a 30-second break. We'll be back here on the TU Sports Network. And welcome back here to the Rose City as we get ready for a second quarter of play here. Early returns have been all Nighthawks here. As we switch sides here, maybe the uh, going the other direction will aid the point offense here. Motes takes the snap, looking right in it. It's a caught ball and a quick pull. 
there by, let's see, Giselle Jones there on the flag pole. Going to be a second down, and we'll call it 18 here. Point looking to put the first quarter behind them here on this second and 18 play. Takes the snap, does Motes, rolls to her right, gets the ball off right in the middle of the field. It's caught ball and a nice gain there. Looks like uh, Kieran Knight there got the flag pull. Caught ball there by number 12, Leah Prather. It's going to be a third down and short here. Looks like a third down and one. 10.57 and rolling here in the second quarter of play. Bunch formation here for the Skyhawks. Takes a snap, just motes rolling to her right, goes back to her left, back to her right, looking for a receiver, and that's going to be a sack. The second of the day by Kaitlyn Herb, who also has an interception to her name today. And that's going to bring up a fourth down and one. Let's see what the point Skyhawks are going to do. I imagine they'll probably go for it here. Going to back up to about a fourth and a six here for point. See what they're going to do here. Like I said, I would imagine they would go for it, but I mean, they could feasibly punt. Let's see what we've got. Nope, they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Balanced gun here for the Skyhawks. Motes takes the snap. Looks, fires the lob. That is picked off by Aaliyah Wood, her second interception of the day. Chelsea Palmer makes a point that that pick by Aaliyah Wood, although it's going to look real good on the scorecard, just cost Thomas about 15 yards. If she just have knocked it down, the Nighthawks would have been in Skyhawk territory. But, you know, it is, uh, it's the end of March, and they're still learning to do here before hopefully the Nighthawks make their way over to the Mercedes-Benz Dome. Wilson takes the snap, looks, and an incomplete pass intended for a Cole, more of a here you take it, I'm about to get sacked kind of deal, but uh, a Cole left without the, the football there. So it's going to be second down, and we'll call it eight here for the Nighthawks. Of course, this is our last home game for a minute here. We'll return in a couple of weeks on April, uh, in mid-April, to get the last couple of games. Wilson takes the snap, looks over the middle, has a receiver. That's Aaliyah Wood, who jukes out. Oh, and almost gets away from it. That flag is going to be pulled there by number seven, Darcy Wright, the Valley, Alabama native, the local girl for the Point Skyhawks. That's going to be a first down and a whole lot more. Let's see where they spot the ball here. Looks like it's going to be f uh, first and in inches here for TU. Yesterday we saw head coach Chelsea Palmer empty the bench in the second half against Reinhardt. I imagine we might see the same thing today if all keeps going. As Wilson takes the snap, fires, caught ball to Giselle Jones, who hips and dips her way into the end zone for a TU touchdown. Giselle Jones on the score makes it 26 to nothing. PAT pending with 7.27 Left in the opening half of play, it's been all TU. I think I did notice 
studying the point defense is the attack point f or studying the point defense is the attack point for TU uh, should be in that middle middle portion of the field right where Giselle was stationed. They like to clear out and leave a, a nice wide hole there in the middle. We'll have to see if TU can continue to exploit that. Wilson in a balanced gun. Knight in motion. Takes the snap to Wilson. Looks, fires, and caught ball there. That's Giselle Jones there, and that adds one. Going to be a 27-0 lead, so a 7-27 left in this first half. Your TU Nighthawks have a commanding 27-0 lead, and Point is just sitting here trying to figure out how they get some offense going. There have been no punts so far in this game. Everything has either been an interception or a touchdown here. Alexa Wilson has had a tip drill interception occur, so not at all the interceptions have been on points end. The Skyhawks come back out in a balanced gun. Motes at quarterback. Takes the snap, rolling to her left. Goes back to her right, looking left, right, left, right. And it's going to be a PBU there by Kaitlyn Herb, who got her hands up in the air and knocked that one back towards Motes. Nice job there. If you can't get to the quarterback, you need to affect their throw. And that's exactly what Herb did on that play. So it's going to be second down and three here from the 17-yard line. The nice relaxed TU defense looks to see what's going on here. Motes takes the snap, rolls to her left, and she's keeping on going. She's going to try to get the edge, but Nakara Brown prevents that. She's going to be short of the first down. Got a couple of yards on it, though, so it's going to be third down, and let's see where they spot. It's got to be close, either one or two here. They're down in inches here for the Skyhawks. Trying to string some good plays together as we approach the six minute mark in this first half. 27 to nothing so far here, your Nighthawks leading this Battle of the Hawks. Sun Conference likes to attract, uh, attract those Skyhawks, Seahawks, Nighthawks. Motes takes the snap, rolls to her left, tries to juke out Herb, rolls back to her right, but Herb gets to the quarterback and gets another sack here. So that's going to bring up a fourth down and probably about seven or eight here as this will be the first punt of the game, I imagine, as TU goes into a punt return formation here with Kiera and Nidalia Wood and uh, Janae Scott. Balls away. Scott cannot get the ball snugly in. But where the ball lands is going to be right at the 39-yard line. Going to be a great spot to set up. Going to be first and one here for the Nighthawks trying to extend the lead out with 438 and counting in this opening half of play. A quick game so far here between these two squads. First teamers back out onto the field for TU.
Takes a snap to Wilson, a little high, but gathers it, and that's going to be a caught ball there. A nice catch by Nigel Seals. And Seals gets the first down and a little bit more, a little late on the throw there by Alexa Wilson, but she does manage to get it away as the Skyhawk rush got in real deep into that backfield. Looks like we're going to be at first and 16 here from about the 36-yard line. Balanced gun here for TU. Takes a snap to Wilson. Looks, fires just out of the reach of Kiana a Cole there. So second and 16 upcoming here. Just a little bit. Let a receiver a little bit too far here. The junior from Crestview. Cole cannot... Haul it in. These sorts of games are real good for making sure that you're hitting on all cylinders and, and getting the little things right here. As Wilson takes the snap, takes the snap, looks, fires, looks, fires, fires caught ball there, caught ball and just there, and just sat down. That is Kate Groon on the snag. Saw Groon a little yesterday. In Second team action, but nice to see Groon out here playing with the first teamers. It's going to be third down and ten here for the Nighthawks as they look to take this down probably close to the two-minute warning. And that's going to be the two-minute warning here. We will relax for a half a second. And the clock rules are all different from here on into the end of the half. Takes the snap, does Wilson. Look, she's going to try to run for it. She gets loose and gets around. She's got the first down and a little more as she gets around and, and swings her hips out and evades the pulls there. And that's going to put... Thomas back into the red zone. Going to be first down and goal from the 18-yard line. And a nice job getting out there for Alexa Wilson. She is want to uh, make an athletic move or two. If there's nothing available downfield. Three receivers to the bottom. Amiri Logan, the sole receiver to the top is Wilson. Takes the snap, looks left and fires. Caught ball. No, can't, Groon can't bring it in. I thought she would have had it, but she got a case of the bobbles and just could not get the ball tucked in. So it'll be second down and 18. Second down and goal here from the 18, rather. STU looks to... Get into the th the 30s here before halftime. Seals in a running back here. It's going to be Hoagland in motion. Ball coming back there to Kiana Cole, who can't quite bring it in. That's going to be third down and 18. Not sure about that. I think that might have been more on uh, a Cole than it was on Wilson. Now, I know yesterday with Margarita Pena possibly scratched. Yep, that's what, exactly what they're going to play. Kiana Cole was slated to play center as she is right now. It's always a good point to have a backup center ready to go. In key situations, you don't need the ball going over your head. Takes the snap to Wilson. Looks, fires, has a receiver across the middle. It's Logan. But she way overthrows her. Logan might be pretty tall, but she's not quite that tall. And it's going to be fourth down and 18. And obviously, TU's going to go for it at this point. Minute 20 left. And this might be the first time this TU offense is going to not find pay dirt this entire game without a turnover. Turnover. 
So a minute 20 here as Wilson comes back with the play. Point's done a nice job on this drive containing TU. Three receivers to the bottom as Wilson takes the snap. Looks, fires to the end zone. She's got a wide open Maddie Hoagland there for the touchdown catch. And that is going to be a 33 to nothing lead here with a buck 15 left in this half. Just a nice, lazy throw. Just perfectly in the back of the end zone where Hoagland could get it a little bit of a busted coverage there on point. There was nobody in a baby blue jersey anywhere around Hoagland. So now for the PAT, Wilson takes the snap, rolls to her right, looks, fires, and it is, I believe, no good. Have not, did not actually see a, did not see the referee call touchdown there. So it's going to be a 33 to nothing lead here with a buck 15 left, and we will see if Point can get some offense going into the second into uh, problem, what's probably going to be their last possession of the second quarter. Let's see if they try to mix it up here with, with what they're doing. What, where they've been attempting thus far has proven quite unsuccessful. Moat's still back at quarterback. Sidecar right is number four there. Elijah Nathan takes the snap. She's going to take it herself, but it is going to be Jalen Pelaez with the pull there, the freshman from Tampa Plan, and that's going to be a timeout by a point. Try to see if they can stop the clock and get something going. A buck six left. We're going to take it with them here, a quick break. With a minute six left, TU on the TU Sports Network leads 33 to nothing. And we are back from the Rose City. 33 to nothing lead here for your TU Nighthawks as Point tries to get something going here leading into halftime. Takes the snap, hands it off to the running back. The running back cannot quite catch the corner, though, and it's going to be number 24, Mary Logan, who gets that flag pulled there. That's going to be another timeout. We'll stay with him here as Logan crashes down. He does a great job on defense to uh, eliminate the uh, the corner there for the point running back. That'd be a, a number four Nathan, the freshman from Warner Robins, North Side High. So they're down in two here with 60 seconds left. In this half, glad you join us on a beautiful, cloudless afternoon here in Thomasville, Georgia, this Good Friday. It is third and two here, a bunch formation. Motes with a shovel pass gets the first down and a little bit more. Catch made there by Destiny Ellison, the senior from e Sandersville, Georgia, by way of East Georgia Community College. 55.8 seconds, first down stops the clock. Nice little bunch formation and shovel pass there for point to allow the blockers up front to make that short yardage play occur. Point 
huddles up, gets the call here. Another bunch formation here for them. Motes takes the snap, shovel pass out again. There's a few yards. That one to number 15, Laney Grace Benefield, the junior out of Carrollton. Second down and 17 here with very little left. Probably going to take it on into halftime here. It's exactly. We're actually going to get at the timeout here. Final timeout for point. They want one more play, I guess, before halftime. Odd why you would call that timeout with two seconds left, but, you know, uh, that's, that's why they make the big bucks. Point huddles up, tries to figure out what they want to do with their one last play with two seconds left. Honestly, at this point, don't give the ball back to Thomas. That would be that would be ideal for the Skyhawks. Skyhawks still huddled up here on the sideline. Chelsea Palmer giving a little bit of coaching here that if a, an interception happens to uh, go all hook and ladder style and uh, see if we can get a pick six here by way of several players touching the ball. Should be fun if that occurs. Very wide formation here for point. Motes takes the snap, looks, heaves it downfield down the center. It's a caught ball and misses the tackle. This Logan, Logan, and that's going to be a touchdown point. Point gets a touchdown as time expires at the hands of number six, Destiny Ellison, and that's going to wipe off the goose sag off the scoreboard, a bit of a Hail Mary. And TU was not there to contain it to get points. On for the point after here. See what they want to do here. And what has been a half full of Thomas touchdowns. There's one at the death of the first half on the board for point. Have a quick 10 minute half time. We'll come back early, hopefully, and get you some stats and a recap of the first half. I think Point just took their fourth time out of the half. But, you know, we'll run with it. Point very happy to get off the schneid there. 33 to 6 sounds a whole lot better than 33 to nothing, I can tell you that. Thomas did have quite a few of their reserves in on this kind of their second team out of position playing. Maybe not their actual second team, but a lot of reserves there and people out of position. So good to have on film there for Chelsea Palmer. So point hustles back onto the field. Two wide receivers. And that's going to be a direct snap. And a little bit of, uh, that's going to be good. Oh, man, shades of the Pittsburgh Steelers back in the 90s. Oh, man, that's going to make, that's going to go way back in the, in the memory banks there. Shades of Bill Cower there.
cannot remember exactly who that was for Pittsburgh back in the day. But a beautiful play there to go down 33-7 to going into halftime. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with some stats and scores. But at the end of one half of play, your TU Nighthawks lead 33-7. to
Well, welcome back here to the TU Soccer Complex. A 33-7 lead here for your Nighthawks. Let's take a look at the stats here for your Nighthawks. First, the team stats. Visiting point Skyhawks. Run 20 plays for 88 yards. Have uh, three first downs, three rushes for nine yards, and 79 passing yards. Have held the ball for six minutes and 17 seconds. On the TU side, they've run 22 plays for 155 yards, 12 rushing, 143 passing. Individually for the Skyhawks, Matty Motes has led the way with uh, going... Uh, Two of eight for, or sorry, going six of 14 for 86 yards, one touchdown, and four interceptions here. <laughs> Legend Nathan has thrown one pass, which was picked off. On the TU side, Alexa Wilson is 13 of 21 for 143 yards and five touchdowns. She's also thrown a pick. On the receiving side, point is led by Destiny Ellison, who's caught three balls for 62 yards and a touchdown with a long of 57. That being at the death of the first half, for TU, the receiving has been led by Aaliyah Wood, who has three catches for 49 yards and a touchdown. But Nakara Brown has also added a touchdown on two snags for 29 yards. And Giselle Jones has, a, has two snags, one for a touchdown and 16 yards. Defensively, four point. Darcy Wright has led... The Skyhawks with four tackles, one for a loss. Jordan Palmer's added three pulls, and Destiny Ellison has two. On the TU side, Amiri Logan leads the way with two pulls. Caitlin Herb has two herself, both of those being sacks. Aaliyah Wood has one pull and I believe a couple of interceptions. Giselle Jones also has one pull. As we get to a minute left to go here in the uh, halftime. Honestly, talking with points folks, they're kind of pleased with their level of effort that they have seen. Just need to come out and be more consistent here in the second half. Not try to play outside of themselves too much for TU. Right now, it's a, it's a great day to absolutely empty the bench and uh, see if you can get some good playing time for your young players. Develop depth coming in for not only next season, but heck, a playoff run. It never fails. Someone always gets hurt in the playoffs, and having ready depth behind you is worth its weight in gold. So as we get ready to get set up here, Thomas will start the second half with the ball as they look to increase their 33-7 lead. This is the only NAIA action on today, this Good Friday. We wish you a very good holy weekend here, starting with, with Good Friday and, of course, culminating in Easter Sunday. TU uncovering lots of Easter eggs early today. And we have a two-quarterback system to start here with Terry Urente coming in as the utility quarterback. Lexa Wilson lines up as the primary. 
Let's see what we got here. We've seen this a little bit this year, not terribly much, but it's always quite fun when we do see it. Shemaya Coward also coming on to the field here. Takes the Stamford's Wilson. Wilson back to Urente. Urente looking. She's going to run up. She goes back to Wilson. Wilson over the middle to a Cole. A Cole hips and dips there, but a good pull there by number 15, uh, Lenny Grace Benefield for point. A little bit of trickeration there for TU. Never hurt anyone. So it's going to be second, or sorry, first. And we'll call it 15 here for the Nighthawks. Actually, it's more like first and 16 there. I apologize. As Alexa Wilson directs traffic. Wilson takes the snap. That's going to be a caught ball by Logan. Logan gets a few yards, about five there. It's going to be second down here. And eh, we'll call it nine. For the Nighthawks, who are looking to try to practice some of the, the odd stuff, some different looks. Get it on film so they can work it out in practice. Still running the two quarterback setup. Three wide receivers. No, four wide receivers. Takes the snap and a caught ball and an immediate flag pull by number three, uh, Jordan Palmer, grad student from Statesboro. That's going to make it third down here. And about three yards to go. Third down. Let's see what TU comes out with. Looks like Rente's going out as a wide receiver now. Takes a snap to Wilson. Quick pass. Caught by Lorente. And she's gotten loose. Misses the flag pull. And she is going to get all the way. Lorente scores a touchdown to make it 39 to nothing. Pending the PAT with 926 left in this third quarter. Changing the point of attack a little bit. Lorente is quick. We saw that yesterday with some scrambles against Reinhardt. But she gets loose with some shifty hips and dips, and she finds pay dirt for TU. So on the PAT, let's see how they line up here. Like Wilson is coming back out here. Going to be a balanced gun here. Lorente in at running back. Hoagland in motion. Wilson to her right, has the ball, looks for it, looks, 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 and then takes it in herself. And that's going to be point number 40 here for the Nighthawks here in this third quarter. So, Thomas on their opening drive goes the length of the field and avenges that. Last second, uh, last second uh, score there in the first half that wiped the shutout off the scoreboard. Let's see if Point can build off their success from the previous drive here. Motes takes the snap, looks. Looks going over the middle, and that's going to be an interception. No. Oh, Kate Groon. Oh, man. She just could not collect the ball. She had it in her grasp. Oh, dear. She's going to want that one back. 
That's going to be second down and four here for the Skyhawks. Ought to have been a pick by the Nighthawks. A bit of a different formation here for Point as Motes takes the snap rolls to her right. And that ball is, that's going to be a flag there for contact on Thomas as there is a Skyhawk down. It's going to be number seven, Darcy Wright. She gets up. She's getting checked on here. She is in a little bit of pain there as that's going to result in a first down. She's in a good bit of pain there. She's up. A little bit of, a little bit more contact than you want to see in flag football there. First and 10 here for the Skyhawks at the 30 yard line. Wright still getting her Headband attended to. They may have to call a timeout here on this play as still trying to get gloves on. Nope, they get it set as Motes takes the snap. Looks, looks, darts left, darts right. Back to her center, who is going to get a first down and a little bit more as Groon finally gets her flag. A little bit of trouble there by the TU defense. Grabbing the flag of Cleo Worrells, the uh, senior from Hinesville by way of Itawamba Community College. It's going to be a first down. It's a different look on the TU defense trying to get some, some depth built here. We've got... Uh, Diva Jones on at the rush position here. Jalen Peleas, linebacker, along with Zoe Jackson. Motes takes the snap, rolls to her right, looks, and that's going to be straight to Hoagland. Hoagland pitches it back to Jackson and Jackson is going to turn the corner. And that's going to be a pick six for Thomas. Running it all the way back is the combo of Hoagland and Jackson. Turning turnovers into touchdowns here and increasing that to a 46-7 lead with 638 left pending the PAT. An unfortunate decision there for Motes. That ball just went right into Hoagland's hands. Wilson on is the sole quarterback right now. Right now. Rente in, Tay in. At the, at the back running back position, end of the April, in, in at slot late. Wilson takes the snap, throws, caught ball by Agent Zero, Isabella Diapis, and that's going to be an extra point good. And so with 6.38 left in the third quarter, it's a 47-7 route. The Nighthawks have a 40-point lead now over the Point Skyhawks. Tell you what, man, you got to shake that off if you're, if you're Matty Motes and see if you can get some rhythm back going and, and make some good throws. And it's just going to be a difficult – it's going to be first and four here for the Skyhawks. Smotes tries to reestablish some rhythm. She gets the snap. She throws it. It's back to number 11. Nice job on the pull there by Jalen Peleas. 
clear Warriors on the snag there. And man, I tell you, she's six two. There is a that is a large uh that is a large target to throw to. Not a not a bad way, but uh there there are no other players on this field that are that are six feet or better. That is a that is a very nice Luxury to have for the Skyhawks. Balanced gun here. Takes the snap as Motes, and that's a quick pass. And that's back. Motes gets it back. The TU defense is not caught off guard on that one. Stays at home, makes a quick pull. Looks like Zoe Jackson might be holding her mouth guard here a little bit. So second and four here, four point. Five seventeen and rolling here in the third quarter. Takes a snap to his moats, looking, looking. And that's gonna be Diva Jones on the sack. Jones makes it. Moats lucky to not be called for intentional grounding there. She threw it right at her own feet. Third down and four now for the Skyhawks. 440 and counting. course after this TU Nighthawks will take it on the road for a couple of games head up to Campbellsville Kentucky for games against Campbellsville Milligan University and uh, Community College Bryant and Stratton before returning home on April 12th and 13th versus St. Thomas and Florida Memorial to end out the home slate Motes takes the snap rolls to her left rolls back to her right rolls back to her left throws it to Cleo and that is going to be a flag pull short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down now. And the offense is going to go for it here. Point on the other hand. Gets a away game slate here. A couple games on April 6th at Florida Gateway Community College and at Fort Lauderdale. Got the bunch formation looking. She's going to try to get the corner, and she will not find it. Maddie Hoagland on the pull, and that's going to be a turnover on downs here for point. The TU defense staying at home, playing disciplined football, and denying the Skyhawk attempt at a fourth down. Now St. Tom, uh, point will host April 11th and 13th. That's a Thursday and a Saturday versus Florida Memorial. So Florida Memorial will head up to West Point, Georgia, and then back down to Thomasville. St. Thomas will go the opposite direction. They'll head up to Thomasville on, fr on Friday, and then on Saturday they'll play in West Point, Georgia, and then they cap off their season with the game at Reinhardt as Urente in at quarterback takes the snap and that's going to be a caught ball to Logan. Logan gets loose a little bit there. She's keeping going back and cannot find Shamaya Coward on the pitch back, but a big explosive play there for TU. Nice job there. Beautiful job getting free and then finding trying to find Coward on the outside to try to extend the play further. As we're under two minutes left in this third quarter. Definitely are seeing now bench emptying. See Nigel Seals on. See Shamaya Coward on. See Isabella Diapis on. Urente takes the snap. 
Looks right, fires over the middle, and it's just through the hands of Logan. Can't come up with it. It's going to be a second down now from about the, we'll call that the seven-yard line. 75 seconds left in the third. Another quality effort put in today by the Night Hawks. Looking to make another run back deep in the playoffs, seeing if they can claim a red banner for the first time in their flag football history. Urente takes the snap, throws, and this time Logan comes up with it. Amiri Logan scores the touchdown, and there's a 50-burger for the Nighthawks. It's going to be 53-7 to with 41.3 seconds left in the third stanza, pending the PAT. Logan said, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Catches that one. Looks it all the way in. Urente comes back in with the play. Logan and Coward, the edge receivers. T. Peace and D. April the slot receivers. Takes the snap just to the Urente. And that's going to be through the hands of everybody, whether intended for Coward or the Apiece. It's no good. So with 41.3 seconds left in this third quarter, it's a 53-7 to lead here for your TU Nighthawks. So let's see what Point decides to do at this point of the, the game yesterday. Ryan Hart decided it was also going to work on its depth here. Do a little bit of cross training. Point, however, looks to be back to its normal starting lineup. Motes takes the snap, looks to her left, fires, and almost a cop ball. It's going to be an incomplete pass intended for number three, Jordan Palmer. Just was looking to hit that first down marker before she had secured control of the ball. So it's going to be second down and four here for the Skyhawks. This might be the last play of the third quarter. And it is going to be as the Skyhawks drop back to their sideline, the Nighthawks to theirs. So with three quarters in the books, it has been very nearly all Nighthawks in this third quarter, they lead 53-7. to We're going to step aside for a quick break, and we'll be back with more on the TU Sports Network. And we are back for one more 12-minute period here in the Rose City. Beautiful spring day here. Not a cloud in sight. Low 70s. You wish you were here. Point. On second down, Motes takes the snap, rolls to her right. And that's going to be an interception. Hoagland takes it, and that's going to be even more points for TU as it's a pick six for Maddie Hoagland to make it 60, no, 59 to seven, I can't count. 59 to seven here with 11.50 left in this ball game, pending of course the PAT to make it 60. Just a very unfortunate game here. Hoagland jumped that route. And it wasn't far 
to pay dirt. So now we see a little bit more of the, the depth here with Jordan Martinowski on the edge for TU. Takes the snap, does Lorente. Lorente rolls to her right. Uh, now rolls to her right. It was the left, and it's tipped and no good. So with 11.50 left in this ball game, Thomas adds again to their lead. It's now 59-7 here in the Rose City. And, well, points can try to regroup and... See if they can make some forward progress here. It's not a uh, not a fun day at the office for the Skyhawks today. So they line up one more time here. Snap to Motes. Motes a little bit off target there. Pulled by Shemaya Coward. That's going to be number three for point. Jordan Palmer there on the catch. Looking to see what the TU record is for points in a game. I Let's see. They have tied a school. Nope, there's a 74 to nothing game. I heavily doubt we're going to find 70 today. game against Milligan in 2022 during that inaugural run. Motes calls for the ball, takes a snap. It's going to be a handoff to the running back. Running back is going to get through for first down and a little bit more. Let's see where they call her down at. Looks like it's going to be first and 19 here for point. Alleged Nathan there on the sweep. Point trying to put together some sort of positive momentum going into the end of this game. Take something into their game against Florida Gateway. Motes calls for the snap. It's going to be a speed option. She's going to get the first down and a little more. But a nice pull there by Haley Moore, the freshman from America Sumter County. That's going to be second down and a loss of yardage there. It's going to be a full 20, second and 20 here with nine and a half minutes left in this ball game. A nice crowd here in the Rose City with their lawn chairs cheering on the back-to-back -back defending runners-up. It's a beautiful day to do it. So second and 20 here from the 20. And a half or so. We'll call it second and 20. It'll be fine. Motes takes the snap. It's going to be a speed option. That's going to be off to the running back. And an, a missed pull there. But cleaned up by number 24, Mary Logan. Doesn't get much on the play. It's going to be third down now. Call it third down and 15 here for the Skyhawks. Turning to the running game, finding some holes here. It's good to show that and have Thomas and their reserves defend it. Get a little bit of experience there against the run. So third down and 15 here for the Skyhawks. About eight minutes left and counting. Balanced gun here. Pressing up. 
is the Thomas defense. And that's going to be a timeout called here by point. We'll step aside for a quick break with 741 left. TU has a commanding 59-7 lead here on the TU Sportsnet. And we are back here in the Rose City. Point still huddled here as the refs bring refs them back bring out. And back still out. huddled still up still here, huddled trying, up to here trying to get on out here on this third, third, down, third down and 15. Finally break the huddle. Light breeze coming in here. Motes looks over the defense. Takes the snap. She's rolling to her right. She's going to take off and run. She gets a little bit, but Amiri Logan read it perfectly and is there with the pull. It's going to be fourth down and probably about 10 yards to go. Offense is going to go for it here on fourth down, trying to keep the drive alive. Of course, in flag, you have to declare what you're going to do. There are no fake punts in flag football. So fourth and ten here for the Skyhawks. Trying to put a drive together. Of course, the only score that Skyhawks have had so far has been on the death knell of the first half, a long, nearly 60-yard touchdown pass. So three wide receivers to the bottom. And another timeout taken by point right as they were snapping the ball. We'll stay with it here for this one. 6.36 left. Point a first-year program. This is their inaugural season. Reinhardt yesterday played last year. Didn't go, didn't take the invitation to the national tournament. But... Flag a growing sport. There are a few new teams this year, especially in the KCAC as Baker and uh, Graceland join up. Baker actually having a pretty nice season there for a team in its inaugural season. The point and life, both out of Georgia. Of course, Georgia, one of the states that has flag football in the high schools and something that the state of Georgia has dedicated to growing and having three schools in Thomas Reinhardt Point in Life, four schools, as Urente tries to get out of trouble. And she's going to take off and just be shy of the first down. And Mary Logan makes the stop. Shy of the marker, and so it's going to be a turnover on downs. But with four schools in the state of Georgia sponsoring flag at the collegiate level, it's a nice way to get a lot of the talent that is coming out of the state of Georgia. Every year at the National Tournament, we, we get to have a look at the wall of flags from the different schools where it's sponsored, different high schools where it's sponsored in the state of Georgia. 
as Kiana Cola in at quarterback throws, and that's a call, no, through the hands of Martinowski. So a Cole now, the third string quarterback. Looks like we have Urente in. Looks like Shelby Hartley is in at wide receiver. Dia Peace still in. That's going to be Madison Boswell at center as a Cole takes it herself in the shifty. Crestview native gains quite a few yards there, about 10. It's going to be third down and seven here. It's good to see Kiana Cole back in the quarterback position, not something that we've seen a whole lot this year. Haven't really needed to see the Cole-Scott combo as the program grows. Not that originally that was a, a crutch or anything, but it was a great way to generate offense for a for an inaugural program. Good to see the growth of this TU team. Cole takes the snap, looks, fires through the hands that was intended for his ability apiece. And Boswell in at center, the freshman from Riverview High School, originally from Mildenhall, England. A little international flair, of course, with both her and Emmy Sadoon from... Ecuador, nothing like a little international flair to a team to make it fun here. Under four minutes left to play here as a Cole stays in the shotgun. Takes the snap, looks to her left, goes back to her right, throws over the middle and nearly picked off, intended for Martinowski, but Motes and number 15 there, Landy Grace Benefield on the pass breakup. And so that's going to be a turnover on downs there for the Nighthawks. I think that's going to be the first first time they haven't scored on a possession in this game. Maybe another time, but TU has not punted today. They did have the the one interception, so it's the first time that hasn't been off a turnover. I don't remember any other turnover on downs for the Nighthawks off the top of my head. So under three minutes, Point gets another shot, putting together some positive momentum. Twins to the near side. Motes calls for the ball, takes a snap. Thrown ball that is caught. And then flipped back. Benefield tries to get around, but cannot do it. As number eight, Jalen Peleas, makes the pull there. Number eight's a big number to fill, especially the linebacker position for TU. Fill for those first two inaugural years. by Britt Delva, now on the coaching staff at TU as we hit the two-minute warning. Motes takes the snap, looks, fires, caught ball, and that flag is pulled by Nigel Seals. The junior from Crestview by way of UCF, and we third down here quite quickly. Third down and inches. For the Skyhawks with 90 seconds left in this ball game. Again, make plans to join us April 12th here as we start a two game set with our friends from South Florida, Florida Memorial, and then St. Thomas. That's going to be a really good game. Bunch, Motes takes it, gets the first, and a little bit more. Seals gets the pull, but not quite quick enough to prevent the first down. 
So as the clock winds under a minute, Point will see if they can continue some positive momentum. First and 18 here for the Skyhawks. The clock is running here as the ball has been set. Motes takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and takes it herself and seals again with the, with the flagpole. Nice job there by Nyjah. Couple yards more here, but that's going to be the final play of this ball game. And Thomas caps a marvelously played two-game set. This time, well, never mind. Point takes their third timeout. Way to interrupt my uh, my closing montage point. Oh well, one more play won't hurt us. As they are second and fifteen here. Point will look to see what they're going to do with one final play. They did pretty good with one final play in the first half. Finding a receiver deep on a, on a nearly 60-yard touchdown pass. They're going to look to see if they can replicate that here in the second half. 5.6 seconds left. TU emptying the bench. Backing up into prevent defense here. The only player within... Uh, Ten yards of the ball is the rusher. Calls for the ball. There's Motes. Motes. And that ball falls incomplete. And that's going to be all she wrote here from the Rose City. TU Caps, a very successful two-game homestand. This time a 59-7 win over the Point Skyhawks. Make plans to join us again April the 12th. Come on over for a Friday game against Florida Memorial. And we'll see if we can cap off another undefeated homestand here in the Rose City. For the entire production crew here at Thomas University, this is Corey Thorpe, and we will see y'all in mid-April here on the TU Sports Network.